Now, what are you waiting for? Like our page, 514 online. Chill. And you're highly entertaining as well. Like, you have a story. Well, I was watching your video. You have a story with your music. There's a message. Like you said, there's a message you're trying to reach out. Yeah, for sure. I have to. Come on, there's little kids listening to the state of hip hop right now. You see? T That's why I'm still rapping because if I allow this trap, T R A P, terrible rap. Yeah, terrible. That's exactly it. To continue, there's going to be problems. I don't mind if you have good jams. If you have good jams with a nice flow, you know, and you're hitting bars, like, like that's fun. That's fun hip hop. But if you're talking in that mumble rap while you're talking about Percocent and shit you probably never tried or shit that, that's killing our people today. What are we that, calling it now? Emo rap. Emo rap. That's emo rap. I agree. That shit, that shit I don't play. I don't play in my car. I don't play that in my house. That stays far away from me. Listen, I emo listen emotion like that. Okay, you want you want to listen to that type of music? Grab some alternatives, some out new rap. Exactly. You know, go ahead and listen. Make to your that. own. That's it. Hip hop should not be having you commit suicide. That's true. Stay in your own you know lane with I mean? that. Leave leave hip hop out of that kind of drug scene. You know. You know what I mean? Keep it. You know, go to the raves. That's okay. Bounce your head off the wall if you want to. That's it. Leave it out of hip hop, please. <laughs> I hear you on that, man. I hear you on that. You're a real OG for real. Like I hear you on that for that. Emotional and write about your emotions inside a song and stuff. We all do it. But uh, all of this, let's go get high on Xanax and Percocets and let me start mumbling and make absolutely no, no sense. sense. Let me have uh, a three minute song with only four bars that I repeat every eight bars. Yeah, no. Oh my gosh, like like Gucci Gang, how like he said that like 50, I think 52 times or 50, over 50 times if I'm not mistaken. That was the number one word he said in that song. That was like the only part of the song. That I remember as well. Times 21 Savage says, isn't it? <laughs> that is true, you see. That you know, is true. Like, oh, we, we, are, we already know who you are. Obviously, we're watching the video. We've heard your music before. You don't have to tell me your name a thousand times in the same fucking song. Give me a break. Pop was always used for expression. It was meant to express yourself. But there is a fine line between expressing yourself and taking the whole community down with you. Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, that's how it is right now. Exactly. That's not... They, should, they shouldn't even be allowed to have trap music in the hip-hop genre. Exactly, that street. should be a, its it own lane. like the lonely kid that gets picked last at the cage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it should be the ugly kid. You know, that, That's you know, it. You got you got five on your team. I got four on my team. I gotta take trap. <laughs> <laughs> and I agree. That's so, just how I feel. And I mean, if it's real trap music, we're we're talking about we're listening to Ti here. Exactly. Trap music that you can understand. Trap music right. that you can bump your head to. You know, smoke one to enjoy. Enjoy yourself with. You know, dance to. You know. For sure. I like pop. I like boom bap. I like stuff that makes me nod my head and want to maybe get out my seat and go. Like go check the DJ and be like, Yo, what? Is, who's that? You playing, man? That beat slamming. I you totally know? agree. These beats come on and I'm like, oh, I did it. I'm gonna bounce around here for a little bit, but nothing was happening. <laughs> I know, and you know what? With the new kind of hip hop, you totally forget. Like you, you forget that you like the song. Like it doesn't, it doesn't appeal to you after two weeks. Oh no, no, because you stopped listening to the lyrics. Now, now it's just the beat. That's it. It's just a hit. It's just a hit. That's all people are looking for. So uh, most people just want to hear the hook. Yes, the, most people want to hear the hook. The trap music, because that's all they're giving you. They're just giving you the hook four times a song. That's it. They'll and mumble their way through the rest. It could be a freestyle, it wouldn't matter. That's true. It's, it's all you hear. You don't hear about the struggle as much anymore. Like the real rappers that I know, the real rappers that I respect and I talk to and I listen to, there's, there's, there's struggle 
in their voice, their, their struggle in their in their lyrics. You hear, you can relate to their problems. You can relate to their pain. You don't. Yeah, well, real pain is real pain. You can't fake that. That's it. It's not like uh, you know. I'm I'm going through this pain, and uh, I feel you, brother. Like I feel what you're going through. It's no. It's like. It's Papa Molly, Papa, Papa Peel, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, turn up. <laughs> it's like, it's changed. It definitely has changed. Yeah, it's totally a smelly internet rapper, you know. You Talking know. About, I got guns, I've done time, I shoot for fun. It's really some little white kid behind the computer desk with, you know, a couple of pairs of glasses on and some suspenders. <laughs> Well, you can't G-check that person. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's funny how things have changed. It's funny how hip-hop has changed. You know, I'm not going to lie. There is some positive things that did change with hip-hop. <laughs> there is some positivity in hip-hop. Like no, with, that's true. With, like, I see how Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar, the message he's trying to send out to the young folks today, you know. T.I. Oh, sure. with that Gucci they message. Know. Too bad, T.I. got to fuck it up with the with the whole Hyman thing. But that's another story. You know, like there's some people out there still today who want to send a positive message, some positive frequencies through hip hop, you know? Well, you know, sometimes there's gangsters who are rappers and there's rappers who are gangsters and then there's gangster rappers. That's it. And that's fine gangster if you're a gangster. Rappers are, stu are usually in the studio and they only talk about what other people have done. That's it. But if you have your story, if you're talking about your actual story, it's not so bad. If it's something you live through and you want to express yourself and that's your life, you know? Yeah, I think if you haven't been through any bullshit, you don't talk about it. Exactly. Exactly. There's no point of rapping about shit that you've never been through. Because when people ask you in interviews, when people ask you on the radio, people ask you on the streets, you know. Did you do any? Did you really do any of that shit? And you can't talk about anything. Damn right. You know. If I find myself homeless again, I'll probably rob you. You know. You know. So you definitely like. I heard this term from from a rapper named Urban Logics, like when he was performing at La Coca Nostra. He had a term called he rap raps. Do you do you consider yourself as someone who rap raps who who is an authentic rapper who who knows the game who knows like the history of hip hop as well and rap? Definitely, definitely. One hundred percent, Tom. But for me, I think I'm more of a like a, rap is what I do and hip hop is how I do. Wow. That's deep. Yeah. That's deep. So it's a it's a way of life. It's a way of life for you. Totally. You already know, guys. We are we are on the phone with Seed Dread. We are on the phone. Yeah. And I am so glad I'm talking to you right now. This has been such a pleasure. I'm getting some some history lessons from you as well. I'm, oh, for sure. I'm glad you guys are having me. Five one four online. That's it. That's it, man. I really, you know, enjoy hearing about little stories about Lil Burgundy because 10 years ago I used to play there all the time with my friends. Like, oh, oh, that's exactly, you already know. You already know. That's it. That's it. And my family took me there many times. I still go there for the, for the barbecues. I still go there for the, for the outreach programs. I still go there for the, for the programs, the, everything, you know. It's, it's really the heart of the black community. A lot of my family lives, still, lives, still lives there. A lot of my friends that are from there still go back every year to the barbecue. And I said, we can't forget about the hood. We can't forget about where we come from. We, as a people, we can't forget about the struggles that, you know, our city has been through in the community. Oh, I put birds in my raps all the time. <laughs> I, I I can I can hear it. Like you 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 love where you're you love where you're from. You love where you're from. For sure, man. You're not gonna forget Growing New Burgundy. New Burgundy, you know, me, but like, if you could survive in Burgundy, back when I lived in Burgundy, you could do anything. That's anything. true. Anything. That's true. People didn't know how hard it was, especially with the police brutality. Oh my God! It's I was there when they were, I wasn't exactly there, but when they shot Anthony Griffin, I was very much still living in the city. It was a rough time. That was your hood, and someone dying. That you, that you know, that's terrible. 
So you know. know. Spoke to this man, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what's funny? It happened just, I think, last year, two years ago, maybe three years ago, uh, around that time. Uh, someone passed away from police in Montreal as well. It keeps happening. That's why I respect the hip hop that try to send out a message and that's what that's talking about what's really going on. And not a lot of people. Gotta tell the cops, that's it. We're black doesn't mean that we're smoking crack, we carry a gat, try you know, to attack and steal your backpack. We're one of the people, probably one of the people who don't like to do that as much as they portray on the media. Especially we're people who've been whooped as kids. We know how to fear, you know, like, yo, I'm not going to do that. I gotta get my ass at home, you know? I got shit to do. Like, people don't know that, that we're really actually like that. Like, we respect our lives. We appreciate, we value ourselves, you know? Now we're just asking others to respect the value of our life as well. I mean, back in the day coming up, like, you know, I've taken many a person's hat, wallet, watch, chain. But these were things we did when we were kids when we had nothing else that's to do. That's the environment that you were, you were around as well. What's that? That was in, that's the environment you're, you're around. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, let's go do this, okay, again, again, again. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the youth center for the kids, the outreach programs are so important for Montreal. They're so important for the for the black community. Well, what's important for Montreal is for parents of today's youth yes. to start whooping their ass. <laughs> Oh, uh, we mi we're missing that discipline. We're definitely missing that discipline. I hear you, brother. When I, when I was a kid, if I'd have told my father or mother that I was going to call Child Protection Services on them, they'd have said, all right, you go right ahead. It's going to take them about 15 minutes to get here. By then, you will be one fucked up little kid. That, oh, my God, you better pray that you run in for 15 minutes straight with the phone on your ear. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them the cops where you are because they will find you. Yo, my mama, when she used to I'm shoot something... I'm 47 years old. My dad's like 79. And oh. To this day, I will not cuss him down. Mm. I am definitely afraid for my life. <laughs> I hear you. You see, my dad, my dad's actually 74. So, like, I had older, an older generation raising me. So, I've been raised with that iron fist. I know what it's like to look in your dad's eyes, your mom's eyes, and, and they don't have to say anything. Exactly. Over. Life as you know it is just about to change. You just understand, you know? So back to Lil Burgundy. Did you have yeah. to have some some freestyle rap battles in Lil Burgundy? Did people try to try to battle you in the street sometimes? Oh, I know it's hard out there. Man. Exactly. I just go from Verdun to Little Burgundy and come back to Pope All over. Everywhere I went, somebody wanted to battle. And it was great because we just did it on the streets, you know what I mean? And everywhere I went, somebody would get dropped. Jeez. See, some people, some people always want you to prove yourself. They always want you to prove yourself. They always want to see what you got. Oh, uh, that's how it is, though. That's how it is out there, huh? Rap was, a, it was, a, always has been a competitive sport. But it's a sport. Us, it is. Then, it's a way of life. It's it was a, a, we didn't take anything personal. And that's how it went. If you were just a better freestyler, you had better dope bars, drop lines, hard licks. You know? That's how it went. You, you, you know, battle and then go eat at a restaurant together after, like, you know? 100%. If anything, 100%. you would throw a punch or two and then you're talking then, after. Well, if I lose, I'm like, damn, homie, you got better from last week. That's week's it. Good job. See, that, that already tells me you're a real dude, like, the way how you can be happy for someone else's success. You have to be. You have to be. You know. Well, you're just you gonna be a straight up hater who's miserable all the time. You ain't going nowhere when you're like that. You're just no. worried about other people's success all the time. When I first started rapping, my homies used to tell me I sucked. I should never do it. But I didn't stop me because I loved to do it. You know. And then I come back around freestyling, and they'd be like, "Damn, man, maybe you should keep at it." You know. You see, that's it. I see. I see. You're you're a pretty dope rapper. I listen to your songs more than more than like ten times on one song just to understand the message. Like, uh, Bless you. like you're you're a dope rapper. You're definitely a dope rapper. 
I appreciate that. Of course. So, so you're definitely you're doing a tour as of January 31st. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. It's Tell everybody about that tour. Tell everybody about that tour. Well, folks, as uh, well, I just tell y'all, I was homeless for quite a while, and hip hop saved my life. I got off the streets, and as I got off the streets, looking back, I realized it's just not, you know, homeless people who are hungry. It's people who got normal jobs and feed their family and stuff like that. It gets pretty rough. Straight up. Especially in the winter times in today's economy. It's really high, the cost of living, you know what I mean? So it's sometimes all you can afford to do is pay your bills and keep a roof over your family's head, but then you have no food, so you use a food bank or something. Me, I got to give back because I had to use that too, you know what I mean? And I know people are hungry, so as a human being, it's important for me to feed the hungry. That's doing my body's work, quote unquote. And... Um, so yeah, January the 31st kicks off, basically, we're charging $10 cover charge, $8 with a non-perishable food item. All those items will be donated to the soup kitchen of Charlottetown, PEI, of Halifax, Nova Scotia, Fredericton, New Brunswick, Miramichi, New Brunswick, and Sussex, New Brunswick. That's, yes. that's real cool, man. That's just too bad you can't come to Montreal. Well, I was trying to book the Belmont, but they never got back to me and reached out. I tried to book in Quebec City, too, but the same thing, you know what I mean? It's crazy I, at the Belmont right now. There's so many shows going on. There's so many things popping. I was trying to get, crack the roster. I'm sure you'll come to Montreal soon. I'm looking forward to that day. I'm going to definitely come talk to you again when you come to Montreal. I'm yeah, looking forward to meeting you in person, too. Well, you know, when you share the video and stuff like that, you could be like, we gotta get this motherfucker up here, yo. That's it. I'm, That's I'm exactly what I'll at. tell the people. Thank you for reminding me, man. You know. That's all you do. It's a, a we do for we. Word of mouth is the best form of advertising. Exactly. Exactly. So other people can tell other people about your shit. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's like, a, do you know how hard it is to get someone to click share? It is. Facebook. It is. It even is. even a simple like. It's hard out here to get love. It takes six seconds to do it. That's it. But for you people, know. it's so hard. It's so hard. Even though it takes one second, six seconds to to click like or share. You know what I mean? It's like they're looking at the screen going, "I've got to travel so far for that." Let's say Montreal, Canada, everywhere. We gotta support our artists. We gotta support the people who are repping us. Exactly, you know, America's doing their thing. Make it less time for Canada to shine, you know? That's it, that's it. I definitely agree. So we got the Grammys, we got the Junos. We do. We got everything. We got everything that you know, you know we have the platform. Exactly. We have the platform. We have the artists, we have the skill, we have the talent, but the support is low. I also got to say that I'm signed to BME Media Group. That's... Which is, uh, so you with a record label? Yeah. Pardon? You're with a yeah, record I'm, label. Indeed. BME Media Group was started in Montreal by a, a rapper named Too Bad. He goes by Deuce. This guy is the original... I don't know if you ever remember a song that went, Hey, Captain Jack. Um, it was back in the 90s. That sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This guy toured with the, the Spice Girls and stuff like that. He yeah. He came this wonderland. He then created BME Media Group. He's my cousin. His name is Mike Zero. Boy makes all of my music. That's your record label. You hear me listening to, rapping to, he probably made it. You know what I mean? He's helped me since 2012 when we started the label and continues to do so to this day. So tell everybody what's the name of your label again. Shut that, shut that out, man. Shut that out. You know, you want to go check out www.bmemedia.tk. Name of the label is BME Media Group. That's what's up. Yeah. How many albums you got out right now, bro? I got seven albums out. Seven albums. Wow. So you've been yeah. doing this for a while now. You've been, you know what you're doing. Yeah, I've been around the block a few times, you know. I've done a few shows, you know, Mob Deep and 
KRS One, Pumpkin Head, you know, she needs a culture, soft fish, yo, whole bunch. I want to talk about one of your songs. I want to talk about one of your songs. The Clayborne Chronic Else, which is known well, as T H C. Okay, well, first of all, you just named two albums. Two albums. Yeah, so the Claiborne Chronicles was my third album. Yes. THC was my fourth album. So these are albums, you're not songs. Yeah. So this is albums. the so this is the Claiborne Chronic. Rock. Yeah. Album. And THC, two different yeah. albums. Two different albums. Tell me about them. Tell me about where you got the names from. Those are really dope names. Well, the Claiborne Chronicles comes from well, it's my last name, Eric Claiborne, and. You know, it's family, and I was thinking, I want it to be like stories, but because I smoke weed, it's got to be chronic L's, like I roll a blunt, like I would roll an L, you know, yeah. my papers that way, and uh, so I was like, but I wanted to sound like chronicles, like the Claiborne stories, you know what I mean, so I had, I hear like you. That. that's how the Claiborne chronic L's came up, you know, it just had to be about weed, and then THC, you know, I just, I was saying, I want to follow the out of the crowd. I want to stay in the, in, the, in the marijuana area, you know what I mean? Having it blend meetings together. So the albums are kind of related, but not at all. So THC, and they'd be like, well, why? So then I was like, dot, 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 because I'm dope. <laughs> I did read that. I did read that on your website. I thought that was pretty dope. I thought that's pretty true as well. You are pretty dope. You know? So that's, that's how I did that. I was like, well, THC is the uh, chemical component in marijuana, tetrahydrocannabinol, that gets us lifted. Yes, sir. And I was like, well, let me just throw one, you know, THC. Yeah, why not? That's some dope. Let's get it. I'm not going to lie. That sounds like a perfect name. It sounds like a perfect name for a strain. For sure. It does. For sure. It does. That's, that's sure. a great name. That's a crazy name. I'll give a shout out to my work I'm working with, it's uh, H-W-G-A, yes. otherwise known as Here We Grow Again. Here We Grow, say it again, Here We Grow Again? Yeah, Here We Grow Again. <laughs> you, can you, come, you guys come up with some catchy names, that's for sure. Yeah, well, you know, it's what happens when we smoke a bunch of weed and think about good things. That's it, that's it. It's not about the, that, that crazy... Like I said before, like that crazy kind of drug kind of lifestyle. Like, I don't find weed a drug. Weed's a plant. That's it. There's a time and a place for everything, you know? That's and it. Different crowds for different things. You know what I mean? I like the music sometimes that you can just roll one up and, and listen to the mess, listen to the story, and jam to it. And just well, that's the type of music I like listening to, you know what I mean? And if you have my favorite artist, that's pretty much all I listen to. And also because I don't want to forget anything when I got a performance track. <laughs> you know? See, that's the hip-hop that we, like, that our generation pretty much grew up years, in. Yeah. Right? It could be 10 years since I played a, a certain song, or 8 years since I played a track, and somebody's like, play this one. So I always listen to my music, so that way if they ever do, I'm like, ha, I got you. You get me. So you always come prepared, you're always ready. Yeah, definitely. And if you're prepared, you have nothing to worry about. No, no. And if you're a freestyle, if you can... If you're like, a freestyle. If you're hip-hop off of freestyle, which is how, how I started rapping, then you really have no problems, because sometimes you may forget a verse or two, and you may have to continue the song. It might have to be a freestyle, and if you do it right, right, nobody will know the difference. That's it, that's it. So you're not someone who chokes anymore. Like you who listen to every freaking yeah. word rapper spits, and you after the show you be like, see, uh, the second verse of No Hook. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you didn't do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just tell you that I I do that. <laughs> you do that, huh? Yeah. You, you like to you like to mess with people's mind with your rap. For sure. Yeah. For sure. I like that. I like that because when I listen to your music, it gets me in the zone. It gets me into like it's like I'm seeing your world in your eyes. You for paint sure. such a perfect picture that way. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. that of course, a lot. of course. Amazing. I also read that you were nominated for one of your films that you did. 
Yeah, that was nominated as a, I think it was a best uh, soundtrack for a, for, a, for a movie. Oh, wow. It was called The Filmmaker. It was a filmmaker. Song was bigger than life from Stone Down. Wow. And you also, you also worked in, uh, you also were an extra in an LL Cool Day movie? Oh, yeah, Rollerball, too. That was fun. That was filmed in Montreal down by the casino. In Montreal. Wow. Yeah. Wow, so you were in a lot of films, like, you were on CBC, you, you were an extra with LL Cool J, you were nominated, like, you, you have a pretty great resume as a rapper. I got a movie that I star in named Skeet Proof. No, that's what on, I want you to talk about. On YouTube, which has over 2 million views on it. 2 million views now, I remember the last time I, I saw it was 1.5 million, now it's like 2 million views. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you see? It went up a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> You're being humble, man. You're being humble. <laughs> Two million yeah, views. Yeah, I don't, you know what? When people come up to me, fuck, man, you're super dope. And I'm like, thanks, man. I appreciate it. That's you that THC, you know? <laughs> just, you know? Following my dreams, do the same. That's it. That's it. Spread that kind of message, man. And when I play a show, like, I'm getting tired of rappers who play shows and don't want to come hang out with the crowd. You know. And they just bounce. And they just bounce. Or they go in the back. Never come out. I yeah. So you, you. When I play a show, I'm, I'm done. I'm pretty much off the stage, into the crowd. DJ's tearing down. I'm at the bar. We're getting drinks. So your energy stays high after a stage. You, you, you mingle with everybody. You have a drink. Yeah, man. You're not, you're Freestyle not gonna try to go home. People, take pictures, hang out. You know what I mean? Fuck a meet and greet. I'll be there right after I'm done. And I have to get to one of your shows. I definitely have to get to one of your shows. I love your music. I love your personality. You must be great on stage as well. Tell people about that. On stage, it's, uh, I don't know. It's like I've been, it was, that's like my house. It's like where I do. I keep it clean and I keep it and I make sure it's very hype. And you keep it real. You keep it real. Keep it. Very real, very real. That's yeah, I've, I've been told I have an awesome stage presence. Like uh, you'll be forced to pay attention to me. Not only because I'll stop the music and be like, "Hey, you in the back? Shut the fuck up! I'm playing a track here." <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're one with the stage. See Dread on Five One Four Online. Yeah, yeah. You already know. Tell people where they can find you on YouTube. Hey. Facebook. You can find me on Bandcamp, you can find me on Facebook, you can find me on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram. Just Google Seed Dread and bam, I'm the only MC you'll see for 10 pages deep. Don't sleep on me. <laughs> Definitely not. Don't sleep on him. You already heard. You heard it on 514 online. Now, you know I have now, to ask you this. It's time for me to interrupt the acapella with the beat. I don't really need it, man, because I got the beats from the streets. This is how I do it. I won't put none of y'all to sleep. I freestyle on my point, talking to Montreal. I'm in MB. I'm Frederick Ting. Got to pass through Edmiston to get the check again. And now it's a Frenchman. We're at the border. Sacre bleu, monsieur. Moose I try to get to my show with spectacles and Dway. I don't even know, man. My freestyle flow, though. Gotta smoke some more weed, cause I don't do blow, yo. Just to maintain in my game, and I ain't cursing. I spit freestyle rhymes, cause these ain't rehearsals. <laughs> Woo! That's Woo. what's up. You, you, you spit fire upon the phone, man. Like, <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo. That was amazing. Thank you for blessing our page. Thank you for blessing 514 Online with your presence with your voice, with your message, with your music, with your Feed the Hunger tour that's coming up. It's a, it's a uh, privilege to talk to you, man. It is. Oh, it's a pleasure to speak to y'all. Thank you. Bless you tonight. You too. You already know. Bed bugs bite. <laughs> 514 Online with Steve Dread, another king in the industry. Thank you for listening, guys. God bless y'all. What's up? I'm a fact stacker, cause the more that you know, then the less they attack it. Freedom rain.